You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials or even starting to appear on shelves or by prescription or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoy the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health podcast. I have Catherine Brown. Uh, she's a holistic healer, which we'll get into more of what that means in a second. She's also the host of the Just Being Honest podcast. Website for it is Just Being Honest. There's no G on the end of being, making it being. So, uh, Catherine, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. Hey, Richard. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, again, a brief bio is that you're a holistic healer, but how would you describe what you do? Uh- Hey, that's a perfect question. So um, I am a holistic health coach um, and healer and what I like to call a lifestyle designer. Um, I have my thing called Just Being Honest or pretty much KB. That's what my friends call me, KB's lifestyle design. Um, and in all reality, um, I am alive to basically <laughs> – be a portal to them, be a channel to them, open up their hearts, open up their minds. We work um, both with um, mental awareness, body awareness, and fitness and nutrition awareness. So everything goes hand in hand. Nothing um, is a coincidence of how things occur. Everything that turns out in your life is a matter of um, kind of the patterns that you create in your life. Um, and it all starts with how you think, um, whether that is, and this brings to kind of Richard, um, kind of your line of work is also our dreams can have a direct neurological reflection about what we're processing about perhaps what we've gone through, um, what we're about to go through. Um, it's quite introspective in that sense. So that is what I work with. It's, um, you know, unveiling the real authentic you um, and right. helping my clients honor their soul um, and living in that soul's highest potential about, you know, why they were meant to be on this earth in the first place. I bet you get a lot of people to break down and cry at various points in your discovery with them. Oh, yeah. And it can be very <laughs> random, you know, because I do many things that they don't even know um, when I'm you know, working with their vibrations, I'm opening them up. Um, I'm opening up that portal, as I mentioned before. And, um, you know, just what we talk about and the activities that we do, journaling, um, self mantras that we create, um, self realizations do come up, and they come up quite drastically sometimes. And I've, you know, for instance, I had a client one time, she was, I don't even know I'm crying. And I'm like, because you're, we're unleashing that stagnant energy within you, all the resistance that was held within you for so long. That's also like Richard, when we sleep every day, we can walk around so tense, so stressed, Mm. you know, we're driving with our hands clutched. But when we go to sleep, we are purely at, we are relaxed. Our brains are, you know, filtering out all that stuff. And that is all of the emotion, all of the reflection be let out. So, yeah, it's very emotional, but it's so, it is, as I say, so healing. So how did you get into this area? What, what's some of your background that led you, you know, down this dark and twisted path? I'm just kidding. Gosh. What's your background? Well, you know, I am a believer that a lot of things that we go through in life generally shape 
um, kind of our greatest gift. Um, and I found out at a very young age that I had um, just, I don't want to use the word magical, but just gifts that other people may not even realize. Um, neurologically, you know, when I was a young child, I had what the doctor said, my brain turned off. But I saw a lot of things. It was kind of like an um, epilepsy kind of episode. Um, I saw things kind of when I was kind of out. um, And I had very vivid vivid memories of it. And I was, you know, under the age of five. Um, I I remember thinking about things that were going to happen. And then it would happen when I was younger. Um, And so up to this day, I often at times have that out of body experience multiple times walking around in this world, like I'm watching everyone else. Um, And I have, I guessed things that were happening. So it kind of was me just kind of stepping into that truth and realizing this is my gift. And this is how I'm working with the cosmos and the universe and displaying that to everyone. You know, my story is, I'm a big creative, I'm a big designer. I'm very artistic, um, and I channel that through emotion and feeling. And um, I was a very sensitive child, um, very receptive of people's emotions, was always a smiley face of a dysfunctional family upbringing. And um, not to say that, you know, people didn't love each other, but there was a lot of dysfunction. And uh, I think that played into what I went into, which was a lot of design. I went into fashion merchandising and design. And for a long time, I tried to cover up what I should be. Um, And I have fitness and nutrition in my my upbringing. My mom's a, a functional nutritionist. And so I've grown up with that about how we are all made of light, um, how we, you know, the brighter foods that we eat, the brighter we become, the more clearly we can think. Um, I've, you know, Richard, from what happened when I was a child, um, you know, I'm very uh, receptive of vibrational energy and um, just like mm, energetic forces around me that I am very careful about how I treat my body, what I put in my body, the amount of sleep I get. Um, I'm basically like a balloon floating around. And if there's like a pin or a needle, like I could pop, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's kind of a long story short, how I got into it. Um, and it's, it's not only, you know, until the time that I put on the shoes and really expressed that that's what I was doing and that's what I was helping. Um, and it was a matter of, you know, giving people sessions first and, and that was my gift and my love just coming to help people. I love helping people. So what, what's a typical session like? Is it essentially like talk therapy or I don't know, what do you ask the person to do? Are you in person there, like putting your hands on their head or something? Like having a no, session? no, no, I don't do like the Reiki healings, but I do. Um, every person is custom. So um, my first thing is a discovery call with someone. I, I only work with people that are 100% ready to commit to uh, a transformation within themselves. Um, there are no shortcuts with me, and I will call them out. <laughs> so, um, and it's exactly what they need to see. I'm a direct reflection of what they need to work on in order to grow. So it is all custom. Um, there's not one typical session like someone else's but generally I start with mental awareness how are you talking to yourself right how are you talking to yourself because how you talk to yourself is how you're going to live your life and it's how you're going to create a pattern here and there and I go into body awareness what's your energy saying about you how's your posture what are you doing to benefit yourself are you walking you know whatever you know those are just like such like like on the surface I go deep you know what's your childhood upbringing like Um, and then, you know, people like my clients reveal to me, I don't have to ask them much. They will reveal to me what has happened, um, that perhaps is making them skittish of, uh, say an intimate relationship. Maybe they got, um, abused or something. Um, but it all goes hand in hand. And then from there, we can focus on fitness and nutrition. Then we can, you know, focus on, okay, this is how you grocery shop properly. These are foods that are going to fuel you with sustenance, you know? you know, try this. And I'm, I'm not about restricting you. I'm about, you know, feeding you with knowledge, you know, 
So, um, and, and we do a lot of breath work. Never count out the breath work. Breath work is so important. It will change your life. Um, so, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. And any um, unusual experiences you've had with people that stick out in your mind? Not in bad necessarily, but just like stuff that shocked you with what came back at you in a good way. Oh, like in client purposes, like uh, things that have shocked Yeah, things me? clients have, uh, you know, without revealing confidential stuff, but, you know, yeah. the zeitgeist. Yeah. Stuff, like what, what have clients told you that changed, I don't know, your whole way of doing it or shocked you or surprised you? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's interesting. Whenever I do a session, I believe every time I'm talking to a client, you know, they they feel a puzzle piece that I need within my life. They give me a lesson back in return. So whether I'm asking them about, um, and everything's confidential, but for instance, if I'm talking to a client about um, uh, furthering a relationship, right? They want to get back yeah. into the dating game, let's just say. Why do they keep choosing, because everything is a choice, why do they keep choosing to be in a relationship or be in even just face-to-face interaction with the same type of person. I always choose the same type of person. They're unavailable or they're the bad guy or girl, whatever, you know, it's right. because there is something that you are not healing in yourself. You are not thinking you are worthy to have something that is going to fill you and make you feel, you know, higher than, right? So that is um, kind of when I step them back and say, okay, let's, and that is when, for instance, um, like I have one client perhaps that was in a work relationship. She didn't even mean it to be a relationship. It was a, her a higher up that took advantage of her, right? And so it's things like that. It's about trust. So then we go into trust and learning how to trust yourself that you can stand in your, to your own skin and that you can be compassionate to yourself one more time, that it's not your fault, you know, that you have integrity. And then it's about creating integrity within yourself because when you do that, your vibrational energy rises up and then the right energy will come back to you in that form of a lover or a friend that you need, for, for instance, you know. But it really, Richard, as kind of back to your question, it's really becoming more and more kind of like apparent that I am seeing similar patterns in the mental state of people and relationships. Um, And it's kind of concerning to me, you know. I mean, we're losing a lot of communication um, when it is so you just ask someone a question, like, how do you feel about me? But people get so scared, you know. But, um, and it's also, you know, still that feminine and masculine energy out there is still off balance. So kind of disconcerting me in a way, but that's, that's in a nutshell. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. I, well, I, just, I don't want anything that, you know, like haunted you, but I don't know, you know, there's, so there's commonalities and patterns. You, I understand, you know, the patterns don't seem to be that good to you, which I understand. It's all good. Is there any, uh, again, are there any outliers you've run into unusual people? that said unusual things to you that just stick out. I'm just always curious about that. Oh, unusual things to me? Um, like what? I don't know. Um, not, that's, that's fine. Maybe you just see the pattern. I mean, it's, it's, all, <clears throat> it's all truth. It's all truth. And it's all good that comes out. You know, anything that anyone says to me, I'm not shocked. Um, I have an open door policy, I guess you could say. So they can say anything they want, you know, um, right. because I can read through whatever they say. Um, you know, there's always an under, uh, a between the lines, I guess you could say of what someone says in anything, you know, if someone says I'm tired, it really just means like, probably I don't want to do that. You know, it's kind of the same message, right? Oh, <clears throat> all right. So here's an interesting thought, uh, men versus women, you know, <clears throat> I don't know I've been married for 20 years and, uh, early on, my wife would think I was reading the lines and I, I insisted to her, my, my head was like a rock. You know, there was just, if I think the sky is blue, that's what I'm really thinking, you know? And it it seems to me that women, I don't know, they look more for shades of meaning than men do. But do you experience that or is it within the individual person where they either do that or not do that? Mm, I think it would be, you know, I believe, um, you know, so men and women both carry um, estrogen and testosterone. And uh-huh. there's kind of like when we don't balance those out, then our way of seeing can be a little bit skewed. But I have learned that with men, they say what they mean. In most, you know, 80 plus percent, they 
they say what they mean. Um, if right. they if they say like I don't want to do that, like I don't want to do that. You know, if like the sky is blue, like they're like yeah, the sky is blue. Like they say what they mean. You know, and so like where we're like a little more you know female. If you identify yourself with female, you're like ah oh, well it's cerulean today. It's like a shade of periwinkle maybe. Or it's a baby robin's egg blue, you know, so that's kind of like the way that that kind of like there is a difference. Um, but I do tap into that sort of unique um, energy at that time, um, whether it is more testosterone based, more um, estrogen based. Um, and I always also like to work with their birth chart too, to kind of see um, where they're lying creatively, um, what houses, you know, like their planets are in. So it goes a little bit deeper too, but yeah, guys generally say what they mean. (laughs) I'm learning that slowly, but surely. Well, you said you have abilities to, you know, see things other people don't see. Is that always happening with you or do you have to focus your mind in to do it with someone when they ask you to do it? You know, how is it, is it very noisy in your head with what's going on with other people or have you learned to like keep it out or what's your state like? So, um, I am, I guess you could say like an outgoing introvert. Um, I'm a projector, so I can be in groups and be sociable, you know, carry on a great conversation. I can enjoy that chitter chatter, that loud vibration. Um, but yeah, my head, there's a lot going on in there until I have learned, you know, the power of meditation is amazing. And um I do spend a lot of time, you know, recuperating or self-care for myself, nurturing myself, because I need to bring that energy back within me, because it does create a big, you know, like, it's very draining for me to be around certain energies, um, you know, especially right. walking around like large groups, um, you know, that's why I don't go to festivals, you know, it's just everything bounces off of, you know, <laughs> it's like being in a, a like, um, what, what do you call it? Like a, an amphitheater or a, a, or a symphony, like a, being at a symphony, you know, the sound is vibrating everywhere. And I can be by someone I don't even know, and just kind of sense them, you know what I mean? Um, and so yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I, I do have to protect myself from certain energies that I don't want to bring in. Um, but, but it's, it's kind of interesting. Okay. So, uh, what about the podcast that just being on his podcast, what inspired you to do that? And what do you get out of doing? So what inspired me to make the podcast vocal is that I've always had a blog. I've always loved creative writing, recipe development and that nature, but I felt that I had a larger story to share um with our food industry being so corrupt with our environment in squanders i mean we're living in a microwave you know and i i just was fed up with it you know with the lack of communication out there i i was fed up with it and also i wanted to share other people's stories about not only their entrepreneur of how they created things um because that's just like a tip of the iceberg right I wanted to hear deeper, you know, what was their childhood upbringing? Because I believe as a child, it shows so many things about what you're meant to be. There's so much innocence as a child. And um, I think that's where your true honesty lies. And it's only that when we get older and older and older, that is when you start to negate those truths and start to try to do other things because we think it's right. Um, So that's why I brought the podcast out. I interview entrepreneurs, um, Olympic athletes, actors, actresses, um, you know, my friends, everyone has a story to share. Um, and I want to nourish people, you know, talking about, yeah, sure, food, but nourish them mentally and physically, um, whether it is sharing a product that I love. So um, that's kind of how it goes. And I love doing it. I get a kick out of it. And I've had an amazing feedback from it. Okay. Um, Any podcasts you've done? Oh, let's talk about the feedback. What kind of feedback have you gotten? And uh, is it tied to any particular guest? What what are people saying about the podcast? Um, Well, obviously, they say that I'm a, a little bit of a cartoon. I love that because that's just me. I'm not making anything up because 
Richard, I'm just being honest. I mean, I have found my authentic truth and I live within it. Not to say every day is rainbows and butterflies, but um, I've learned to stand in my own skin. And the feedback from that is thank you. I mean, I think we all just need to be ourselves. And if I can be a leader and a little bit of a guidance to that, then I'm happy to do so. I've had some amazing guests on that I'm so appreciative of. Um, the founder of uh, what actually one of the co-founders of the honest company Christopher Gavigan he just created a product called Prima um, the based um, product line amazing and um, I've had Lawrence Greg Kennedy on there she talked about um, you know the loss of her arm and her eye and about how that changed her life how to create authentic relationships you know changing over um, to a new state and um, it's like real life talk you know I've had the founders of Branch Basics on there talking about non-toxic clean um, I don't know if you know Richard there's a documentary out there called Stink and it talks about all the effects of chemicals basically chemicals out there um, the things that we're oh, smelling but what have you um, so they have an amazing product line as well I like to share these things I've had um, Olympic Olympic medalist, swimmer, um, actually two, Caroline Burkle and Rebecca Sony on there. Um, and they tell some amazing healing stories about what it takes to train for the Olympics, how they started out as a child, you know, swimming and how it, how it basically goes to get to the Olympics and about how much, gosh, torture that could be. Um, and then about, you know, how to create your identity after being an athlete your whole life. Um, yeah. So those are just some tips of the icebergs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it sounds like it's really opened up your world and allowed you to spread your work to a lot more people by doing the podcast. That's really great. Yeah. So what's, it's awesome. It's a beautiful gift. All right. So what's, uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch to do a session or to listen to the podcast? You know, what are some links? For yeah. So um, people can follow me everywhere at just being honest kb on instagram so j-u-s-t-e-i-n honest h-o-n-e-s-t k-b so that's on instagram i'm also on facebook at just being honest um they can contact me via my website at just being honest.com remember being has no g and um there they can find my email on my contact page they can subscribe to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Simplecast FM, and iHeartRadio. And they can um, rate and review as they please. I am so appreciative of that as well. And if they want a session, I will honor your guests, Richard, a first uh, discovery call for free if they say JBH free. And that's, that's cool. how I know I will uh, be getting them from your little podcast. Excellent. Well, Catherine, thanks for coming on. And I really appreciate being here. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Richard. You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials, or even starting to appear on shelves, or by prescription, or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you.